there's a story about Trey Lance. And I said, well, I guess this officially makes the show now. Uh, the man who is responsible for this is Matt Lombardo. He is a national NFL reporter. He is nice enough to join us here on 95.7 The Game. Matt, Damon, Bruce, Ray Ratto, thank you very much for joining us today. How are you? Damon, Ray, great to be here. Thanks for having me. So it's good to have you here. We want to get to know you a little bit because you got a piece of information that honestly everyone who we know who covers the Niners locally did not seem to find. And I'm not asking you to reveal your source, of course, but tell us a little bit more about how you concluded that the Niners are continually underwhelmed by Trey Lance's development, if you would, please. Yeah, guys, this all stems from a conversation that I had with an executive who's pretty tight with people within the 49ers organization and then following up with a couple members of the coaching staff. And, you know, the feeling around San Francisco dating back to last summer during training camp was a little bit of a, you know, disappointment over the Trey Lance that arrived in training camp versus what they saw on film at North Dakota State from an arm strength standpoint, from a deep ball accuracy standpoint. And then you look at when he got into games this season, didn't exactly set the world on fire. Now, I know he had the injury, and I know that he's a rookie, and certainly it takes time for NFL quarterbacks to develop. But the 49ers gave up a lot to go and get Trey Lance. And the questions that I keep hearing about the deep ball accuracy and the arm strength in practice and some whispers about how quickly he is you know, understanding the playbook and all of those things, the general vibe is that this might not have been what the 49ers hoped they were getting when they gave up all of that draft capital last year to go and get it. Uh, based on that, um, well, let me ask this, because yeah, uh, given the fact that he, I don't think, is he's not in the building at all, as far as I know. So the I'm guessing that the executive you talked to, who's talked to other people, they're operating on perhaps, if not old information, at least not very recent information. Uh, did you get a sense from talking to the people you talked to that this is a recent development, that they're still kind of sour on how he's doing and how he's progressing? Well, there's not a whole lot, guys, as you know, and you pointed out that they could be going on right now during the thick of the off season, And that's where I think that there are still chapters of the Trey Lane story yet to be written, right? You know, the concerns that were shared with me stemmed from last year during training camp, last year when he was able to practice during the regular season. But, you know, quarterbacks do make those big leaps from year one to year two. Just think back to Carson Wentz, and this is kind of a kind of a, a through line that I think that you can draw between these two young quarterbacks. I covered the Eagles for NJ.com and ESPN Radio in Philadelphia during Carson Wentz's rookie year, and they were wildly underwhelmed by his – deep ball accuracy by, you know, being able, not being able to make all the throws down the field. But then John D. Filippo, the Eagles quarterback coach at the time, rebuilt his throwing motion. And in year two, he came out and he was an MVP caliber quarterback. So I think that that's the sort of leap that the 49ers have to hope that Trey Lance makes in his second year. But the, the kind of counter argument to that is you have another quarterback still on the roster who is what, two years removed from taking them to a Super Bowl and one year removed from leading them to an NFC Championship game, very nearly a second Super Bowl. So the leap that Trey Lance has to make to overtake Jimmy Garoppolo, who from people I talk to, people within the organization believe is the better option. You know, Lance is going to have to show up this spring and this summer ready to prove that he can make that leap. At least that's just what I've been hearing. Matt Lombardo. He's got the story that the Niners are continually underwhelmed by Trey Lance, and you just brought up Jimmy Garoppolo, who I think a lot of people out here are surprised to see still on the roster, although they shouldn't be because it's hard to trade someone off of a surgery. But beyond how difficult it is to trade a unproven back-from-surgery player, it sounds like you're sort of insinuating that Garoppolo's still on the roster because of concerns about Trey Lance, not due to concerns that other GMs might have in Garoppolo's rebuilt shoulder. Yeah, I think that you look at Jimmy Garoppolo and you look at Baker Mayfield, right? They're the two remaining veteran quarterbacks that are still on the market. And we're coming off an NFL draft class where 
let's face it, the, the rest of the league told you that these were not franchise quarterbacks in the making. Kenny Pickett's the only quarterback who went round one when was the last time we saw that happen. So I think that there, while there is some concern about the shoulder injury, I don't think that there's any concern that it's going to be career threatening. And obviously the 49ers, you know, have a little bit of leverage because if an injury happens during training camp, they can be the team that, that, you know, benefits from that by trading a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo. But, you know, I just have a hard time dismissing what I've been hearing from a few different places that there's a feeling among some within the building that Jimmy Garoppolo remains the better option than Trey Lance. And, you know, knowing that, I have to think that factors into the decision making at least a little bit on the part of John Lynch, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan. So, just to kind of sum up, Matt, the continual underwhelmed aspect that you're reporting on is maybe more residue of last year's impressions than it is new information from off-season workouts or conversations. Yes? For sure, through his rookie season, because I, I don't know how you can be impressed or disappointed based on not being in OTAs or minicamp or doing football activities. So that, that's been what I had heard throughout the course of the season after the season and, you know, just extrapolating out the circumstances surrounding Jimmy Garoppolo, um, they all seem to be painting a picture that the 49ers are at the bare minimum keeping their options open as far as how they're going to move forward at quarterback. Can I just ask you why you went with this story now? Were you commenting on something and it got picked up more than you thought? Or did you think that this was new and relevant information to this news cycle? No, you know, full disclosure, you know, I think all of us spend a lot more time on Twitter than maybe we feel comfortable admitting. And, you know, I saw someone commenting on Trey Lance and, you know, how he hasn't really taken the field yet after all the draft capital that the Niners gave up. And it was just, I just, you know, quote tweeted the story and, you know, sent it out there. And next thing you know, it becomes the driving force of the NFL news cycle today and obviously you know i've covered the league since 2011 i've been on uh, you've covered two different teams throughout my career i've been on talk radio i know how that works but it is just a little bit surprising how one quote tweet can become the story of the day matt lombardo at matt lombardo nfl is where you can follow him on twitter thank you very much have a good weekend matt you got it boys thanks for having me on